All right, Kelk, it was uh, one of my actually favorite lessons of the year, uh, something called Wopatol's Rule. It really gives this idea of a new way to investigate um, these two pieces, zero divided by zero. We've looked at that in times past. We understand that sometimes there's situations where you can evaluate that. We came up with values like one, zero, sometimes we got negative eight, sometimes we got three fourths, sometimes we got infinity. Um, and then we're, we're going to look at this situation too, infinity divided by infinity. And a lot of times people are like, well, that's just one. I want you to realize that these two ideas are, you know, very equal in terms of understanding and computing. Infinity divided by infinity, it, it's not one. It, it has some of the same ambiguity as zero divided by zero. And that's what we're looking through. So we're going to give you kind of a background of Wopatol's rule and how we, how we work through it. But um, sometimes people refer to little hospitals. It's not it's L'Hopital and uh, L'Hopital's rule. We're going to investigate it by looking at this limit. The limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Notice if you plug in 0, you're going to get the sine of 0 divided by 0, or 0 divided by 0. Now, we call that an indeterminate value. Okay, we call it an indeterminate value, something we don't fully know or understand. But if we were to look at the graph of sine of x, you know, the, the, the graph looks something like that. I think we all, all know that piece. Okay, that's, that's what the graph looks like. And if you were to look at the graph of x, We, we would get that. And the question is, what do you get as you divide them? And if, if you look at this graphical representation here, if you were to divide them close to zero, they look like they're about the same. You know, up here in this vicinity, they don't look like the same. But in this vicinity, they do look the same. And in fact, they are. And this limit comes out to be one. In fact, if you were to graph y is equal to sine of x divided by x, the, the graph actually looks something like this, where there's an open circle at 1. But the limit for sure in that situation is 1. You know, to look at a, a table argument as well, we can do this a few ways. Uh, we can type in x, or you type in sine of x. Now I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do, uh, and we're actually going to leave, we're going to go sine of x, we're going to divide it by x, and then up here. Whoop. And then up there, we're, we're going to do just sine of x because the x will pop up within our table. So as we look at our table here, notice what happens when we plug in values that are close to zero. So we plug in like 0.5. And you can see that y sub 1, that's a sine value. It's very close to 0.5. In fact, uh, we go 0.2, get an output very close to 0 0.2. 0 0.1, get a value that's very close to 0.1. This y sub 2 area over here, you can see that that's what happens when we divide them. So you can see the limit is getting very close to 1. If I go 0 0.01, 0 0.0001, you know, again, let's look at, say, the 0 0.01. You can see, you know, the, the sine value is very close, and then the y sub 2 value very close to 1, so on and so forth. And, and even if you look at there, you can see the y sub 2 value at the bottom, 0 0.99999, so on and so forth. So that's a pretty convincing argument from a table perspective. Now, suppose we have something different, okay? Uh, suppose we have this limit. Limit is x goes to infinity of x squared minus 1 and 3x plus 1. So if you plug in infinity, you might say, well, I get infinity over infinity, which is 1. And that's, that's definitely not correct. We consider the graphical approach. Look at x squared minus 1. It's a, it's a parabola. Okay? And then the 3x plus 1. 3x plus 1 is, you know, it's, it's bigger than the x value for a while, or the, than the parabola for a while. But 
there comes a point where the, the parabola continues to head on off into infinity and beyond. If you were to divide these, like, like look at these for a second here, like this green segment, if you were to take the blue one divided by the red one, uh, the blue one's larger. So if you, you know, take the blue divided by the red, you're going to get a value bigger than one. But look at what happens. You continue to divide these. Then the space continues to open up. It continues to open up. In fact, this x squared thing right here, it heads off to infinity faster than this thing heads off to infinity. And so the truth is, is that this limit is actually infinity. If you were to go ahead and uh, go into your y equals, and you were to type some of these values in, like say, um, if we do parentheses x squared minus one, and we were to divide that by parentheses three x plus one, if we look at our table, watch what happens. We, we plug in certain x values, like we're gonna head towards infinity, so we plug in one, we plug in 10, Look at what's happened in the y values. You plug in 100, plug in 1,000, plug in, like, I don't know, a million or whatever that is. You can see what's happening. It's, it's not that the, the y value is doubling or anything. It's, it's becoming significantly larger, significantly larger. And so, in fact, this limit is infinity. So that brings us to L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says, given the following conditions, if you have a limit as x approaches something of f of x divided by g of x, if you get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, if you get that indeterminate value, which we speak of, then you could do this. You could take the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x divided by g prime of x. That considers the rate at which things are headed towards infinity. Now, so without looking at a graph or without looking at the, a table, let's show you how easy it is to determine this very first limit. We, we plug in 0 and we get 0 over 0. So apply L'Hopital's rule. Limit as x goes to 0, go ahead and take the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is cosine of x, and the derivative of the bottom is 1. Now plug in 0 and you get 1 over 1, which is 1. Done. L'Hopital's rule is amazing. It's truly remarkable how easily you can identify um, limits. Like in this situation, you plug in infinity, you get infinity over infinity. Don't know what it is. Use L'Hopital's rule. Limit as x goes to infinity of, take the derivative of the top, 2x. Take the derivative of the bottom, 3. Plug in a large number, you're going to get infinity over 3. 3, yeah, divided by 3, that's going to make it smaller, but not that much smaller. It's still infinity. So we try some examples. Example two, the limit as x goes to 1 of natural log of x over 1 minus x. If we plug in 1, remember, natural log of x, natural log of x, that, that's, uh, <clears throat> so if we, if we will get natural log of 1, the base is e, so that means e to what power is 1. That's what that means. What do you take e to in order to get 1? And that would be 0. So the natural log of 1 is 0. And the bottom, 1 minus 1, is 0. So because I get 0 over 0, an indeterminate value, I go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. Take the limit as x goes to 1 of, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And the derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1. Go ahead, plug in 1, and we get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. For the next example, I have e to the x. Plug in infinity, you get infinity over infinity. I don't know what that is. Use L'Hopital's rule to find this indeterminate value. Limit as x goes to infinity of derivative of the top, e to the x. Derivative of the bottom, 2x. Plug in infinity, we get infinity over infinity. Did not give us a result? Do it again. Limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over 2. We get infinity over 2, which is infinity.
Consider the next one. A uh, natural log of a very large number is still a large number. We head off to infinity. And the cube root also heads off to infinity. What's interesting about these functions, it's hard to predict which one's going to win out as it heads towards infinity. Because a natural log of 2x looks something like that. And the cubed root of x looks something like that. So who knows? Maybe it'll be 1. Maybe it'll be infinity. Maybe it'll be 0. It's really hard to tell. Uh, thank goodness we have L'Hopital's rule. The limit as x goes to infinity of, we have the natural log of 2x. So we'll use the chain rule. We'll have the natural log of u, and we have 2x. Derivative of 2x is 2. Derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u. So we have 2 over 2x or 1 over x. Over, and on the bottom, we take the derivative of the cubed root of x. So x to the 1 third, the derivative is 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. Now, you can simplify this. The limit as x goes to infinity of, we multiply by the reciprocal. Notice you get 3 on top, and on the bottom you get x to the 1 third. So it turns out that the bottom wins out in this situation. The bottom wins out, and you get 3 over infinity, which a number on top, like 3, divided by infinity is going to bring us towards 0. The bottom wins out. Plug in 0. We get 0 minus 0 over 0. Indeterminate form. Use L'Hopital's rule. Limit as x goes to 0 of. Take the derivative of x, you get 1. Take the, take the derivative of sine of x, we get cosine of x. Divided by the bottom, 6x. As we plug in 0, we get 1 minus 1, as the cosine of 0 is 1, divided by 0. Or 0 over 0. Use L'Hopital's rule again. Limit as x goes to 0 of. Derivative of negative cosine is positive sine of x divided by 6. Sine of 0 is 0 divided by 6 is 0. That is our limit. Next one, we plug in pi. The sine of pi is 0. 1 minus, the cosine of pi is negative 1. So I get 0 over 2. That's not an indeterminate form. It's not 0 over 0. It's not infinity over infinity. So you know what this is. It is 0. So you don't need to use L'Hopital's rule. So always make sure you plug it in from the beginning. We have 2 left. Limit is x goes to 1. Plug in 1, and we get 14 minus 14 over 6 minus 6, or 0 over 0. So what do we do? We go ahead and we use L'Hopital's rule. Now, some of you might look at that and say, well, I could solve that algebraically as well. You sure could, but L'Hopital's rule is probably easier. 14 times 5 is 70x to the 4th. On the bottom, uh, 6x to the 4th, the derivative is 24x cubed. So now plug in your 1, and you get 70 over 24. Both are divisible by 2. I get 35 over 12. That is the limit. I did it that quickly. No need to even factor. For the last one, uh, t approaching 0. Should it be x? If you plug in 0, you get e to the 0 minus 1 over 0, or 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 over 0. That is an indeterminate form. Apply L'Hopital's rule. We have the limit as t goes to 0 of e to the t over 3t squared. Go ahead and plug in 0. And when you plug in 0, you get 1 over 0. We don't know what 1 over 0 is. It's an undefined value. It's different than indeterminate. There's a chance it's positive infinity or negative infinity. Let's look at the result of this in order to determine the answer. Let us consider the graph. If I look at the graph of e to the t, everybody here knows that it travels through 0, 1. It's a function that looks like that. And 3t squared looks like this. So, we're approaching 0, so I want you to focus on this part of the graph. Notice what's happening here. 
as you approach zero, okay, the black graph, which is e to the t, is approaching values really close to one. Let's approach from the right and let's approach from the left so we can understand what's happening with this limit. As you approach from the right, you get a very a value very close to one. Divided by on the bottom, okay, the, the blue function, you're getting a value really close to zero. Okay, I'm going to write a really small number. And if you divide by a really small number, you're going to get a very large number. Consider from the left side, as you approach 0 from the left side, the top function still approaches 1, but the bottom gets really close to 0, a really small number. And if you take 1 divided by a really small number, you get infinity. These are the same. So this limit, while we came up with 1 over 0, when we considered its graph, we do know it is infinity. Now, we kind of looked at it multiple ways. Uh, we tried Wolpertal's rule. That didn't satisfy anything for us. We had a different result. If you were to check your answer, you could simply just type in E raised to the T power. Got some parentheses here. And we subtract 1. And then we can divide that by um, X to the third. And when you look at this table, if you would approach 0, again, approach from the left and the right, so 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, notice that you're getting large numbers right away, like 10,050. If we try some negative values, negative 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, notice again, you're getting very large values rather quickly. So it does confirm for us that we're headed off towards positive infinity. L'Hopital's rule, it's a beautiful thing. If you get it in an indeterminate form, go ahead, just take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and that can help us be able to find these limits. Good work. Short video, 17 minutes. We'll see you in class.